Okay, so I'm going to show you guys a real brief kind of what's going on with a lot of the tools in the family editor. So when you open up Revit, you can come in here and you come up to the R and say new in this little arrow and click family. It'll open this up and these are kind of all the different kinds of families that you can create. Um, that way they identify as, you know, as a generic, a piece of furniture, door, window, whatever. Um, and that has to do with line weights and how they interact with other things. So I'm just going to go into furniture here and this will open this up. So basically right now I'm in, a, it says reference level. This is basically your, your floor plan view. Um, and then you have front, back, left and right um, elevations. So within the family editor there are basically just these five tools and then there are the void options of these five tools. So these make solids and these cut out from the solids different things. So if you hover over each one of these it'll show you a little animation about you know basically what each tool does. So you can see you sketch something and then it creates um, kind of a shape that extrudes up. Blend, you draw two ends, so you draw one shape, you draw another shape, and then it creates kind of a transition between the two. Revolve is exactly what it sounds like. You cr draw a profile around an axis and it spins it around that axis. You don't necessarily have to set it to 360 degrees. It could spin only 180, it could spin 90, it could spin 10, um, depending on what you want to do. A sweep is basically you draw a path and then you draw a shape and it extrudes that uh, that shape along the path. Swept blend is a mixture between a sweep and a blend. So you draw a path, you draw a shape on one end, you draw a shape on the on the other, and it converts the two. So if you have walls that swoop just like that, that would be a good way to do this. Um, and then void is the exact same tools, only the void forms. So for for example. Um, Let's say we wanted to build uh, something real quick that uses a decent amount of tools. Okay, so let's say we're going to build, we'll build a, a cabinet here real quick. So basically what I'm going to, I'll show you real quick with line work what we're going to do. So we've got our, our cabinet, um, and I'll go over what, I'm, what exactly I'm doing here as I model it. But for right now, this will work. So we're going to have that. Uh, do, 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 do. Bear with me for one second here, and then okay. So basically, what we're going to do is, if this is looking at the face, we'll have this little cabinet face here, um, and then we'll put a top on it and stuff like that. But these are our two doors, this will be a drawer, and then this is the frame of the cabinet here. Um, so basically, right now, if I go to my 3D view, all I see is the lines. I don't see any depth or anything to this. So if I go to create, I can create an extrusion. So extrusion is good for things like the cabinet face. So I can draw this shape here. I'm going to say, okay, I've got my my cabinet here and let's see what kind of depth we've got here. So nine inches, let's make this six. So we'll make that six and then let's see what height we've got for our cabinet here. So I've got my little temporary dimensions. I can pull these back and forth and I only want this to be two foot ten and a half inches high so that when I put an inch and a half top on it, it's at three foot. And then my toe kick is only going to be four inches. So I'll click that and say OK. And I'm going to get rid of these lines so that way I'm not looking at anything goofy. OK, so I've got that. Then in high-end cabinetry, especially in traditional, a lot of times you'll see uh, what's called bead mold. So I'm going to go into create and sweep and I'll sketch a path. And then I'll hit this little rectangle. And it's defaulting to the front reference plane here so I'm sketching on the same path as what I did my my extrusion and then when I draw this you'll see this little thing come up and I can click and drag this around if I wanted to be that way 
but basically this is going to end up being what I sketch on. So if I click my check mark and I go to the 3D view, you can see this is what I was seeing and I was dragging around is this, this little thing here. Um, so if I go to, say, my left elevation here, I'll go to Edit Profile up here in the top left. So if I click on this and hit Edit Profile, now I can sketch. And I'll give you guys the dimensions of what these things are that I'm sketching out here. Um, if you're going to do traditional cabinetry, I'll give you guys a whole sheet of what this stuff, dimensions of this stuff, and things like that. So in the future, if you're ever curious, you can. Uh, you can model these profiles. Um, so bead mold, it essentially looks like this. It adds a little detail to the front of the cabinet um, and gives you a little something to jazz it up a little bit. So there's that. And then if I copy this, I can copy this down here and then just edit sweep, sketch path, and I'll pull that down. So now I just basically took that same, since I don't want to have to draw the profile again, I can take the same thing, copy it down, and then just adjust the path that I drew and pull it down here. Now, if I do another extrusion, I'm going to offset this just a little bit to give myself a little bit of a shadow line here. And then I'll do the same thing down here. And I'll snap to the center and snap to the center there. Now, when I'm doing an extrusion, I sketch this thing. Now, down here, you see start, zero, end, one foot. Um, this is going to, it doesn't matter which one's start and which one's end. I could make this a foot and this one zero, and it's going to look the exact same. So, this is basically asking how deep do you want this. So, I'm going to say I only want this to be three quarters of an inch. My doors and drawers and stuff, the face of them is only three quarters of an inch deep. So, I'll click OK there. And I forgot to set that on this, so right now that's still set at a foot. So if I make that three quarters of an inch too. Now if I go to my 3D view, and I like to keep my 3D view at a realistic um, setting, so that way I can see what's going on here. So you see the little bead mold detail running around the edge of the cabinet door and things like that. Um, so then if I go back to my front view, I'm going to put in a raised panel door. So Right now these are solid and I want to kind of cut out a raised panel here. So I'm going to use void. I want to cut something out so I'm going to use void and I'm going to use void sweep. And it's the exact same tool as what I use for the bead mold only it voids. So I'm going to sketch a path. I'll draw this and I'm going to offset this say negative two inches. And now that I see that it looks like I could probably up my style width a little bit. So. I'll make that two and a half. I'll say OK. So I'm going to sketch that one. I'll hit my check mark. I'll go to my left view. And this is another profile that I'll give you guys dimensions for um, on that sheet. So, so that I don't waste your time and that sort of stuff. I'll just go ahead and sketch this real quick here. So if I pull this down, I want to run it. That'll work. And go like that. So this is the shape it's going to cut out of the front of my door. So if I click my check mark, and then I click my check mark again, now I go to my 3D view. Now you can see the raised panel door is cut out of there. So now if I go back here, I can copy this over, and now I have two. So there's kind of the front of my cabinet. And I can add, I could make, you know, handles and stuff like that. If I wanted to make a little knob, I could use Revolve and create a little knob. So maybe I'll come into my floor plan view, hit Revolve. I'll hit my axis line. So I need to draw an axis. So I say, okay, I'm going to revolve around that. I'll come out half an inch. Maybe I'll come over a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of make this up as I go along here. And a nice way, if you're going to do something round on the on the front here, to make sure that you don't end up with a little tiny point there, I always like to drag a line out here. And then there's this tangent tool. 
where if I select there, it's going to make it tangent so I know that it's perfectly flat on the top. And so I can then delete that and do the revolve. And now I create a little knob. So looks like I'm going to need to rotate that around. So I'll spin this around and move it to the other side here. And then if I move this up, Let's place that somewhere in there, and place another one over here, and then we'll place two on our drawer up here. And actually, I want to make sure they're evenly spaced, so I'll go, there's two mirror options. If I pick, I have to pick something so I could mirror across this, but that's not the center of my cabinet. So if I do draw, then it snaps to stuff, and I can snap to the center and then draw where my axis is going to be to mirror across, so straight down, and now it mirrors it across. So now if I go to my 3D view, I've got little knobs on everything. So that makes it kind of nice. You can use, build the entire kind of cabinet right here. Um, and then let's go to our reference level. Let's create a little countertop. So we'll give ourselves a one inch overhang. And we'll come back to foot one. And then I'll come over here. And say, this is going to go. Now, I'm extruding. So remember I said the thickness. But I also know what height I want this at. So I know that my countertop is at three foot. And I know my cabinet goes up to remember that t two foot ten and a half that I made my cabinet height and then an inch and a half countertop on top, I can set that and hit my check mark and now I get the little countertop on it. So then if I want to do another extrusion, I can come back three inches, I'll come over here and basically what I'm doing right now is I'm going to create a little four inch high. So I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go up four inches and this will be my little toe kick underneath my cabinet there. So, you know, in your kitchen where, you know, your feet can kind of stick under the cabinet a little bit. And then I could use extrusions to put side panels on this and, you know, do the, essentially the same thing that I did on the front. So that shows you a void, a revolve, a sweep, and then a couple extrusions there. Um, so what I want you guys to do is essentially play with these tools a little bit, you know, play with blends, play with sweat blends, see what limitations there are to them. Um, but, you know, for your piece of furniture, go ahead and block something out real simple. Doesn't have to be elaborate. If it gets real blocky, that's okay. I'll look at each one of them and tell you, you know, some tips on how to make things a little bit better. But um, hopefully that gives you guys some introduction into some of these tools and gives you an idea of how you can use each one of them.